Using our 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Grab your wheel, remove it, set it aside. Using a 10 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen and remove this bolt right here for our ABS wire bracket. Once we have that screw out, we're gonna follow that wire up to this bracket right here. I'm just gonna slide this rubber piece with the harness right out of that bracket. And set that aside. Using a 12 millimeter socket, Go ahead and loosen and remove this bolt here. We're just gonna throw that bolt right back on the knuckle once we remove this. Now the key in the on position, we can now go ahead and manually crank our wheel like so. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen and remove our nut on the bottom of our tie rod end. Using a pair of pliers, we're gonna go ahead and grab the ends of our cotter pin here. I'm gonna straighten these out the best we can. Let's go to the other side of this here and we're gonna pull that cotter pin out. And we're gonna use the pliers, try and catch us and use the nut as leverage to go ahead and work that cotter pin out. Using our 19 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this nut. Now we're just gonna go ahead and thread this nut back on a few threads. We're going to use a hammer and we're going to strike our knuckle to go ahead and release our outer tie rod. Go ahead and zip that nut off. Now with the nut removed, let's go ahead and pop our tie rod end out. Using a 17 millimeter socket here, we're going to go ahead and loosen this nut for our lower strut clevis fork bolt. If your bolt is spinning like ours, you can use a 17 millimeter wrench on the other side to hold it. Go ahead, loosen and remove that nut. And we're gonna go ahead and work that bolt out. We're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove our upper clevis fork bolt here. We're gonna use our hammer to go ahead and work our clevis fork off of our strut. Using your pliers, we're gonna go ahead and remove our upper ball joint cotter pin here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the head of the cotter pin, try and work this out. Ours is in there pretty good and it's pretty rusty. I'm gonna try using a pick to get through the eyelet here. I'm gonna try and use our pliers here now with a little bit of leverage and go ahead and work the cotter pin out. There we go. Using a 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove our upper ball joint nut.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to install the nut just a few threads. Now we're going to go ahead and strike our knuckle and this should release our upper ball joint. Let's get to remove our ball joint nut here. Now you want to be careful once this nut is released and this ball joint comes up, this knuckle can come forward. So you want to be prepared like so. We're going to use a strap here to go ahead. We're going to use this to secure this knuckle from pulling away. That way there we have that space to work with our strut. With the upper control arm separated from the knuckle, we can now go ahead and manipulate this clevis fork down just so we can get that separated from the strut. We're gonna remove our three 14 millimeter nuts. These are 12 millimeter for the other three. Now be aware, once you remove this third one, the strut may drop out. So at this point here, we're just gonna tuck our strut back up and in. Remove our clevis fork from the bottom. Kind of pop that down and off again. And I'm gonna go ahead and work that strut out and over. Now we can go ahead and lower that strut down. And we're gonna slowly remove it from the vehicle. Be careful of your ABS wire coming down. Let's go ahead and loosen up our strap here. What we're going to do is reposition this here. We're gonna run it up into one of our strut holes up top. Let's go ahead and use a 14 millimeter socket. We're gonna loosen and remove our two upper control arm bolts here. Now with this bolt loose, before I remove it completely, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this one here. All right, once we get this bolt out, just gonna go ahead and repeat for the other side. And remove that bolt. Remove that control arm. Let's go ahead and position our control arm up and into place. Now we did go ahead and clean the threads on our bolts and we put some anti-seize compound on there. And I get this bolt started a few threads. And once that's started, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one started as well. So at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and run our bolts in. We're not going to tighten them at this time. We're just gonna take up the threads and do that for the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this control arm where its natural ride height would be. I'm just gonna loosen this just a little bit. And what we're trying to do is we wanna torque these down in a position so that we're not creating abnormal torque pressure on these bushings. If we torque this control arm way down here and then we force this up, it's gonna to wanna to twist this bushing. It's gonna cause some uh, drivability issues and whatnot. So our control arm is naturally gonna be up in this higher position here. It's not gonna be all the way up. It's gonna be probably right in line with your, your uh, fender skirt here, or fender liner. I'm 
I'm gonna torque this to 23 foot-pounds. Let's go ahead and install our strut. I'm gonna bring this up. And we're gonna go ahead and line up our strut here with our clevis fork. So at this point, we want to remove our strap supporting the knuckle. And you probably reattach our strap to our control arm here because we still want to keep this knuckle secured. Let's go ahead and bring our strut up kind of into position. Feed that up. I'm gonna go ahead and get our lower clevis fork lined up with our strut and work that clevis fork up and onto that strut. Now on the back side of your strut, there's gonna be a little tab that is vertical. That tab should line up with a slot on the back side of your clevis fork so they actually lock together. At this point here, we'll go ahead and install our upper clevis bolt. We did clean that up and we put some NEC's compound on there. Now we just wanna go ahead and I'm gonna snug that down. Now we're gonna feed our strut up into place and get those studs poking through on the engine bay area. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this up and into place. We're gonna reach over the fender and install one of the nuts underneath the hood. Now I'm just gonna try and thread this on as far as I can by hand. If you can get one on the other side as well, that'll be great. It's not mandatory. Just one in place is enough to hold that strut from dropping out on you again. What we're gonna do is we're going to use our screw jack to go ahead and raise our suspension up and into that ball joint. I'm gonna go ahead and line up our lower clevis fork here. And we're gonna use our screw jack to go ahead and raise this up a little bit. You can use a pry tool through the back side, put it into the hole, and you can kind of manipulate that control arm and that strut. And then once that comes through, give it a few bonks. Boom, right through. And go ahead and install that nut on the other side. Let's go ahead and install our tie rod. I'm just gonna poke that through. Then we have our tie rod in. Just gonna go ahead and get our nut threaded on. And zip it up as far as you can by hand. We're gonna use our jack and we're gonna go ahead and start to compress our suspension here. We're gonna bring that knuckle up into that control arm and then we'll get that nut installed on that. So once we have our upper control arm nut installed here, we're gonna to continue to raise up our suspension here. And we're gonna do this just enough so that the vehicle starts to come off of our lift, or in your case, your jack stands. And the reason why we're doing this is before we torque our strut components and our upper ball joint and things like that, we want our suspension to be in its fully compressed or natural ride height positions. Right about there, the vehicle is just starting to come off of our lift. Let's go ahead and start to torque our suspension components. Let's go ahead and snug our upper ball joint nuts. 
We're using a 17 millimeter socket to this. All right, once that's snug, let's go ahead and torque that down to 35 foot pounds. Now we want to pay attention to the hole in our ball joint stud and our notch in our castle nut. If these do not line up where you can get a cotter pin through, what we're simply going to do is tighten this nut so that it lines up with our next slot here. You feed that through and then we're going to use a pair of our cutters here. Just going to tap it in a little bit further. Grab this lower tab. Bend that over. And then we cut off the excess. We're going to use our 17 millimeter socket and wrench and we're going to snug this bolt down for our lower strut clevis fork bolt. Once that's snug, I'm going to go ahead and torque this down to 47 foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and torque our outer tie rod and not to 40 foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and feed our cotter pin through. I'm going to bend our tab over. And we're just going to cut off the excess. Install our ABS bracket here. Get our bolt started. Let's go ahead and snug this down. Once it bottoms out, Maybe another quarter turn. We're going to install our back rubber grommet right here. Just press that into the bracket. It'll snap into place. We're going to torque our upper clevis fork bolt to 36 foot pounds. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and slowly lower our jack back onto the lift or your jack stands. Gonna install your brake flex hose bracket here. And we'll snug that down. Let's go ahead and install the rest of our securing nuts here for our strut. Snug down the other three. Now there are two different torque specs for this series of six nuts. There are three larger nuts. These are going to get torqued to 41 foot-pounds. The three smaller nuts are gonna to get torqued to 16 foot-pounds. It's gonna install our wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and get our lug nuts all started by hand, and then we'll go ahead and snug those down. and torque our lug nuts down to 80 foot-pounds. I'm 
Once you're done with this, you wanna go ahead and bring your vehicle down and have it professionally aligned. That's gonna help prevent premature component wear and help prevent some abnormal tire wear.